Hi and welcome to Themic. In this video, we will learn about harmonic motion, which is something we see a lot in our daily lives and also happens to be a core concept in the study of vibrations in mechanical systems. By the end of this video, you will be able to define what harmonic motion is, identify it, and form equations that characterize or describe the system's harmonic motion. Let's start with the definition. Harmonic motion is the motion experienced by an oscillating mass when the restoring force is proportional to the displacement, but in the opposite direction. Such a simple definition, right? The key points here are that it has to be an oscillating mass, meaning that the motion has a back and forth nature to it. And the restoring force that makes it move back and forth is always proportional to the displacement. But remember, in opposite directions. We can understand this further with an example that is already familiar to us. That's right, the mass spring system. Let's see how it fits into the definition. Well, obviously we have an oscillating motion here, the mass that bounces up and down periodically. We also have a restoring force exerted by the spring, which is given by F equals minus kxt, where k is the spring constant and xt is the displacement. This means that the restoring force is proportional to the displacement. What's more, the negative sign indicates that the restoring force acts in a direction opposite to the displacement, fulfilling all key points mentioned in the definition. Now that we know for sure that the mass spring system moves in a harmonic fashion, let's see what more we can find out from this example. As the displacement is taken as a function of time, we will plot this function taking time in the horizontal axis and displacement in the vertical axis, the rest position being zero and downward displacement of the mass being the positive direction. From the visibly back and forth motion of the mass, we can tell that the mass will go from the rest position to the lower extreme position. Let's call this displacement A. Back to the rest position, this is zero. Then to the upper extreme position, this is minus A, and then repeat. And if you look closely, the mass does not make these motions in a constant speed, but slows down as it approaches and leaves the extreme positions, while it is much faster while crossing the rest position. And why is that? If you remember the definition, the restoring force is proportional to the displacement in the opposite direction. So farther the mass moves, stronger the push and pull from the spring gets, making it decelerate while approaching the extreme positions and accelerate while leaving. Assuming zero air resistance, the displacement plot will look like this. Something about this plot looks really familiar, doesn't it? Of course, this is a sine function plot. Now we are equipped to form the equation for this motion. The amplitude of the oscillation is A. Considering the angular velocity of the mass to be omega, we can write the equation for displacement as xt equals A sine omega t. The first derivative of xt will give us the velocity, vt equals omega times A cos omega t. And the second derivative will give us the acceleration, at equals minus omega square times A sine omega t. Substituting a sine omega t as the displacement here, this becomes equal to minus omega square times x. From the angular velocity, we can also get the time period, which is the time taken by the mass to move one complete cycle. This equals 2 times pi by omega. Now let me show you the three plots together to make the concept crystal clear. Notice how the displacement and acceleration peak at the extreme positions while the velocity goes to zero and how the exact opposite happens at the rest position? Now when you look at the oscillating mass spring system, you can intuitively get an idea of the velocity and acceleration at each point. Besides the mass spring system, there are numerous examples of harmonic motion that we see in daily life. However, always remember that simply any periodic motion is not harmonic. Let's take a small test to check our understanding of harmonic motion. If we have one child playing on a swing and another child jumping on a trampoline, can you identify which one is harmonic motion? Are they both examples of harmonic motion? Think about it. Both the cases involve periodic motion and forces that are acting opposite to the direction of displacement. Do they both qualify as harmonic motion or is neither moving harmonically? If you deducted that the child on the swing is depicting harmonic motion, then you are correct. It is because, in addition to the oscillation, the restoring force is always proportional to the displacement in the opposite direction. You can see the acceleration and deceleration at the highest positions and the peak velocity at the bottom, the typical characteristics of harmonic motion. And if you concluded that the child on the trampoline is moving harmonically, 
then unfortunately you are wrong. While the back and forth nature exists here along with some forces acting opposite to the direction of displacement, those forces are not always proportional to the displacement. You see, when the child's feet touch the trampoline, the trampoline exerts a force similar to a spring. It is actually a combination of multiple springs. But when the child is in the air, the acting force is only gravity, which is constant and not proportional to the displacement. The acceleration during this part of the cycle is constant, which contradicts the characteristic acceleration plot for harmonic motion. Moreover, gravity is always acting downwards. So for the part of the cycle where the kid is free falling downwards, the force is not even in the direction opposite to the displacement. This is why trampoline jump is not an example of harmonic motion. Starting from a simple definition, we learned a lot of things about harmonic motion in this video. Its characteristics, its equations, and plots. And we understood them well enough to identify harmonic motion when we see it. Hopefully, this leaves no doubts in your mind about this important core concept. Make sure to continue learning in our next video.